Our next speaker is entering his first year as our running backs coach and has over 10 years of coaching experience. Please welcome Lance Taylor. Thanks, Patrick. Appreciate it. Short and sweet. How you guys doing? Uh, appreciate you guys coming out. I got to meet several of you last night. Um, hope to meet more of you tonight. Uh, but really appreciate you guys attending our event. Uh, coming, this is my first year at Stanford, as Patrick talked about. Uh, but this is a special place, and, and you guys make it special by attending and, and being a part of this as well. And um, you know, one of the things for me <clears throat> is I've been fortunate and blessed to work at some great universities and, and organizations in the NFL, um, and coach under some great coaches and head coaches with le great leadership. And I've tried to take s something from each and every one of them, or things from each and every one of them and learn and grow. And that's what I think is great about coaching clinics, right? We get to come together and talk ball and share ideas, and that's how we grow as coaches. So I really appreciate you guys coming out. Um, and because this is my first year, I really wanted to start off with my coaching philosophy, okay? These are just things that I believe in, things that I'm going to use as a, as a teacher, communicator, uh, motivator, um, and so we'll get into it. The first thing is, is we must be great teachers. I must be a great teacher and communicator. That's our first and foremost task. Um, we are called to teach the fundamentals of our position, to teach the plays, to teach technique so that they can execute what we're asking them to do on the field. So we must be great teachers and communicators. And we know to be a great communicator, you also have to be a great listener. So you have to listen to the things that they say verbally or non-verbally, whether they understand what you're communicating or not. Trust is always key. I'm all about building relationships, okay? Because what players have to know, I've spent six years coaching in the NFL, I've spent six years in college football, and no matter what level you coach, players want to know, do you care about them on and off the field? Okay? Do you really care about them? Because when you get on the field and you start demanding and asking them for more and pushing them, it's uncomfortable, but they have to trust that you have their best in mind, and you're trying to push them to be their best. Um, the next part is being the standard in the room. I believe that I have to be the standard. Every day when I come in, right, they're looking at us. It's just like our children, right? For those of us who have children, they look and they see everything that you and we do, and they're going to mimic and emulate that. So you are the standard by what you set and how you act and react. Um, the next part of the standard is you also have to st set a standard of performance for the room and also show them what consistency in that performance means. So you're going to set the standard, then you're going to help create and build great habits which help lead to consistency. Um, and then I think it's big for us to find different ways to reach, motivate, and challenge each player, right? We have to challenge them individually but also collectively as a group. And that's one of the hard things, as a, whether it's a position coach, coordinator, or head coach, you have to find ways to reach every guy individually. What makes this guy tick? What makes him go or motivates him? What bush buttons do you push? And also as a group, because you're trying to get guys to buy in to what you're getting everyone to do, okay? As we know, football is a team sport. So in our room, <clears throat> One of the first things that we always talk about in the running back room are our intangibles and non-negotiables. Now, these are things that are immeasurable, okay? So what do I mean? Effort, hustle, toughness, all of those things that you can't quantify, okay? Attitude, preparation, and effort. I talk to them every day that there's three things that you control every day that you walk, walk in this room. There's a lot of things that you can't control. You can't control whether you get the football, you can't control whether your quarterback throws you the ball, you can't control whether the right guard blocks the right guy. But three things that you can control no matter what happens is your attitude, preparation, and effort. And I expect you to control those things in a positive way, okay, which help us build a great atmosphere in this room, okay? The next thing is ATD, attention to detail, okay? It's the little things that count and add up to be the big things. We all know that, right? But we continually preach that to our guys. The other things that we look at for in our room, mental and physical toughness. And then for me, playing fast, physical, and finish at the running back position. 
It's a mentality and mindset in everything that we do, in every drill that we do, in every group training exercise that we do, in every team drill that we do, in every game. It's about finishing, playing fast, being physical, having relentless hustle and effort, okay? Having a pride and passion and intensity. And what I tell my guys all the time is, actions speak louder than words, right? So you're letting me know by what you do or what you don't do, whether it's important to you, okay? You can tell me that it's important or you can tell me you wanna get better or you want more carries or you want X amount of yards. All oh, that's tangible stuff, but what you're doing is showing me that it's not important to you. And then also always playing with a sense of urgency. So <clears throat> I coached in, at Stanford from 2014 to 2016, okay? Um, and this was in 2015, we played USC, the third game of the season. Okay, they were ranked, I believe, sixth in the country at the time. They were undefeated. We lost our first game to Northwestern. Okay, now, <clears throat> if you fast forward, this is Christian McCaffrey's Heisman season where he was Heisman runner-up. He was AP player of the year, and he, he broke Barry Sanders' 22-year record of all-purpose yardage. So he had a pretty good year. So we designed a play. We'd ran this the week before and handed it off to Bryce Love. And we were going to run a pass. Christian up the seam. Every time we ran, ran jet motion, the safety would roll down. Okay, and we really thought that we would put him in a bind. Safety backs up. We don't get the coverage look that we think, so the quarterback checks the ball down. Now, Bryce at this point is a true freshman. Okay, true freshman playing. We've designed this play to go to, fresh, uh, to, to Christian. We check the ball down. It's a, it's a huge game. This is a huge point in the game. And I'll watch his effort. Now that's what we're trying to set in our room, right? It doesn't take any amount of talent, and Christian has all the talent in the world, okay? It doesn't take any amount of, of talent or size or ability to go do what he just did. That's about want to. That's about effort and hustle, right? This guy's one of the best players I've ever coached, okay? One of the best players in, in college football, okay? And he's proven that he's doing it again at the NFL level and he's going to block downfield and get up and block again. It's important to him. He has a sense of urgency, okay? And I always start by kind of showing the room that that's immeasurable, okay? That's how we're supposed to play and finish every play. <clears throat> now, our standard of performance, okay, are things that we talk about, that we chart and we measure and we quantify, okay? The number one thing, and it's really twofold, twofold it's 1A and it's 1B. We want to protect the football and protect the quarterback, okay? One of the coordinators that I worked for in the NFL, one of his mantras was, if you protect the football and you protect the quarterback, you're going to have a chance to win a lot of football games, right? And I know we all believe in that in this room, okay? Um, explosive plays, run and pass. Anytime we touch the ball, we want to create explosives. Yards after contact. That is one of the points of emphasis <clears throat> at the running back position and also as I've come here one of the things that we have really made a point of emphasis this spring and working that and emphasizing that and then winning our one-on-one -on -one opportunities whether it's in pass pro whether it's blocking downfield or whether it's one-on-one -on -one where you're the ball carrier and you're one-on-one -on -one with a defender one man can't bring us down Okay, and then no self-inflicted wounds, penalties, MEs, mental errors, mental missed assignments, or missed alignments. <clears throat> so those are the two things that go into um, building a complete running back. Because what I tell the guys is, we're trying to make you the most complete running back in all aspects and phases, right? You wanna be great in the run game, the pass game, pass pro, blocking downfield, hustle, effort, all of those areas. So we have our intangibles, right, our immeasurables. We're gonna play hard, relentless effort. And then we also have our 
standard of performance, the things that we are going, we want to be great at in our room, okay? And all of that now goes into, so how do we build that? What are the skills that we need to develop to create and build a complete running back? Well, one of the things that I tell them is, <clears throat> great running backs impact the game with or without the football. I just showed you a clip of Christian from Stanford at USC, right? There were multiple clips, and in our running back room, we will sh I'll show them multiple clips of Christian, okay, and Bryce also going downfield and blocking. But that becomes a mentality and mindset, okay? So here's what I call the running back core four, okay? Here are the areas that we must develop, train, and craft. These are the skills that we're going to help them develop. Okay, ball security, run skills, how to be a great runner, what it takes to be a great runner, pass protection, and then route running slash ball skills. Okay, the other thing that I use with my core four is this is how I'm going to use my drill progression on the field and teaching progression. So when I start on the field, every single day we're going to start with some type of ball security drill. Then we're going to go to some type of run skill development drill. Then we're going to work pass protection and then route running and, and, and ball skills as time allows. And we also will work that with <clears throat> routes on air with the quarterback and pre and post practice. So ball security. We talked about the number one priority is ball security, right? Protect the football. So I try to make it simple for guys, right? Some, some guys talk about the 15 points of pressure or all the ways that they're, you know, everybody has a different ball security tape, right? <clears throat> for me, it's control the four points, right? We want to control the front point, the back point, and really then each outside sphere, okay? So we're going to control the front point with the eagle claw, all right? So we're going to take our fingers, okay, and put it right over the point, and that's the eagle claw. We're going to protect the back point, okay, with our bicep, all right? The outside sphere with our forearm, okay, and then the inside with our chest, okay, or rib cage. Now, the one thing that... <clears throat> You'll hear, me, you'll hear me use a lot of these terms on the field, okay, or in the room with the guys. These are really the things that I harp on and the points of emphasis. So we always want to keep our wrist above elbow. So as you have the ball locked down, as long as you keep your wrist above elbow, this football is probably in a pretty good ball carrying position, pretty secure position, okay? Some people call it high and tight. We always talk about wrist above elbow, above elbow, okay? The other thing is we want to keep our elbow locked down. So I always pull pictures from the media that show where the ball is exposed. So Coach Elson just talked about ball being exposed for defensive line play, right? That's like a big target for them. They're going to try to punch that thing out with the quarterback or running back, whoever has the ball. Well, <clears throat> so I will show them anytime you have that elbow out, it exposes the back point of the ball. Okay, and we call that ball in jeopardy. Okay, so we want to keep that elbow locked down. We want to keep two hands in traffic. Now, I always grew up as, as a running back growing up, right? And even when I played in college, it was always receive the handoff, okay? And then two hands over the ball in traffic through the line. Well, what I've started doing the last six years is now keeping that ball in a great high and tight, okay, wrist above elbow lockdown position. And when I get ready to go two hands in traffic, I bring my other arm and lock my wrist. So now I'm two hands in traffic and I can really squeeze the air out of the ball. That does two things. A, I don't ever have to move the ball from a great ball carrying position. The other thing is when I, when I break the tackle, because I'll break the tackle, when I break the tackle, right, now I can go cheek to cheek, right? And it never has to move or switch. When you go here, you are now moving the ball multiple ways out of your hand and you're just running through traffic. The other thing is, is where are defenders aiming? They're aiming at me. They're gonna put their helmet right on this ball. That causes a lot of fumbles. So that's one thing that I've learned. And then the other part is never reach the ball out. Okay, which we all know and talk about. <clears throat> so here's a good example. Christian carrying the ball in a great way. All right, so he immediately tucks it away. Now he gets contact by his own guard. 
okay, which makes him stumble. Now, you see the position that he's in right now. One of the things that I try to do in my ball security drills is put them in awkward body positions or body movements. That's when the ball becomes exposed, right? When you're either falling to the ground, right? Now you, you have to catch yourself or you're getting ready to make a move on a defender, specifically a spin move or a juke move. Now you get here and that ball gets really, really exposed, okay? So really trying to emulate and simulate those in drills, okay? But you'll see Christian, right? The ball is exposed right here. Ball is in jeopardy. He does a great job of recognizing that and going back to high and tight, okay? And then the last part of this is he breaks one tackle, okay? And then he goes two hands in traffic. And you can't see it great from this angle, from the TV angle, it's great, but he just brings that and he locks his wrist. All right, so Saw a great example of Christian carrying the ball the right way. Now, <clears throat> here's an example of what not to do. And always, every offseason, I put together a tape of ball and jeopardy situations where the ball is knocked out. An NFL tape and, and college. Now, this is two years ago. Okay, the Rams play in Seattle. And Ty Gurley reaches the ball out. They knock it out. Okay. <clears throat> really just, they're going to be first and goal, right? First drive of the game. No need. Really, in my opinion, a, a selfish act. Okay. And, and the next slide that I'm going to show them is, is this was the final score. 16 to 10. Okay. There were a lot of plays between there and there. The end of the game, sure, somebody else could have made a play. There were plenty of people that could have made plays to make the difference of the game. But you know, and I know from knowing Ty Gurley, he's a competitor, he was sick to his stomach knowing that they were going to be first and goal from the one-inch line, and they lost by six points. He turned the ball over. Okay? So I really try to hammer those points in because our guys, whether it's high school, college, my kids see the way that those guys on Sunday carry the football. It's highlighted on SportsCenter and NFL Network. It's glamorized. So we have to teach them that that's not okay. But why is it not okay? Not just because I say it's not okay, not because I don't want you to score a touchdown. I want you to score a touchdown for you, for me, for everybody. When you score a touchdown, I'm just as happy as you are, right? It makes both of us look good. It helps our team win football games. So yes, Greedily and selfishly, I want the running backs to score a touchdown. But let's play smart football. So worst feeling in the football, right? <clears throat> when you see the other team kneeling down and you feel like you had a play that could have helped win the game. So this is just partner strip drill, right? They're just going down, carrying it in a great ball carrying position, okay? And then... <clears throat> If you see the guy in the middle, okay, with his wrist locked down, what I asked him to do was to carry it that day with two arms. Okay, pretty simple. We've all worked that drill. Now, <clears throat> this is a ball harness strap, which I brought an example of. And re really love this. So the ball is securely placed in the strap. And then there's this nylon strap with a place to hold it. And the ball carrier will put it in his arm, right, high and tight. And then I will stand behind them and just gently yank. I'm not trying to torque their body, I'm not trying to really snatch, but I just want them to get the feeling of that, whether that ball is loose or not, right? It gives them a great sense of, am I squeezing the air out? Talk about that all the time. High and tight, wrist above elbow, keep the, keep the elbow locked down, squeeze the air out. Now the other part of this drill is I'm, I make them scoop and touch, right? We just saw Christian in that exposed situation, now trying to keep your wrist above your elbow and squeezing the air out with awkward body positions. Okay, we'll also put them... <clears throat> where they have to go around the cone, okay? So all they're gonna do is have a cone in front, I'm, and then when they get the, to the cone, 
They're going to go around the cone and continue on, and they'll have a series of cones. Okay. Now, this is a different <clears throat> ball security strap. This is one with a ball harness, okay, where it's attached, attached to a bungee cord, okay, or really a stretch band is what we attach it to. Now, this is when it's last couple of years where I've been with the Carolina Panthers. And that strap has some give to it where you can work some different uh, movement skills while they're being tugged. The other thing that I always do is, <clears throat> right, is poke, strip, rake, punch at the ball during our different agile drills, ladder drills, and that sort. Um, <clears throat> one of the great things that I, that I use when they're in, in ladders and, and agiles is I'll use the crayon, right, the red or blue crayon that you put on your arm. Most receivers use them as defenders' arms. I use it as a punching stick. So I'm going to put it on my arm as they run through the, the ladder. I'm really going to get a good punch on the ball, and I, that's really pretty effective to try to... <clears throat> Show, show them how to keep the ball locked down. The run skills that we're going to try to develop, okay? So these are really in our bucket of run skill drills, okay, in our progression. First thing that we always wanna work on is foot speed and quickness, change of direction, balance and body control, transition, acceleration and burst, okay? Vision or really read and reaction skills, okay, which I believe is what I teach, eye discipline and eye progression. Don't see too much, all right? See a lot and you see a little, okay? Know what you're seeing and what you're looking for. Attacking defenders, okay? Accelerating through contact and breaking tackles. <clears throat> so the first thing, foot speed and quickness. Love starting with ladder drills, right? Everybody does them in their off-season program. We do them in our fourth quarter mat drill program. But I always wanna start with it because I believe <clears throat> It's imperative, I believe it's imperative for running backs to have great foot quickness, right? Not just speed, but foot quickness. <clears throat> now, you'll see the A-frame right? I've used this everywhere that I've gone. And what this does is, which we know, play with great pad level, but great body position as a runner, right? So you want to be planed out. You want to have great body position. We don't want to be a waist bender. We want to be a knee bender, okay? So what that means is, is just to get underneath the, it, it applies specifically to guys who are, who are taller, like me, I can walk under without even having to bend down. But for taller guys, right, they have to bend more. But really, we want to bend in our ankle, in our knees, and in our hips. We don't want to bend at our waist, okay? That's not great running position. position. So we'll, we'll position this one-man shoot at the end of our drills so that they can burst through with great pad level, okay, and then continue to finish and rise up as they continue on and finish the drill. So you'll see he'll go from a ladder karaoke, and I call this changing lanes, right? <clears throat> getting behind a guard or a puller, okay, now I'm getting north. Simulating things that we're going to do on the field. So this one clip is, in one clip you see a ton of different footwork drills, right? Balance and body control, tight roping the sideline, stuttering the defender, and then accelerating out of his break. But here's what I always tell people. Watch him behind the line of scrimmage. He has great patience, right? And now it's burst. But that's why you... When I watch Christian, and, and people always ask me, especially, you know, after his Heisman, you, you know, runner-up year, and what makes Christian special? What makes him so great? What's, and there are a lot of things, 
And the top thing is, is his competitiveness, his competitive desire, his relentless, relentlessness in the way that he prepares and trains. I mean, it, it's incredible. But probably second on my list for him is his foot quickness. He has the amazing ability to wait on his lineman and be patient and then burst and accelerate once he sees the cut. His feet are always moving. So the next part, change of direction and transition burst. So working both of these skills. All right, so transition burst. So what I'm talking about there is, is really what I just talked about with Christian. It's being able to see a hole and transition and, and accelerate. Or be in a move, some type of change of direction movement, whether it's a juke move, a spin move, or a lateral move, and now be able to transition, stick, and accelerate, okay, and burst. How quickly can we come in and out of our brakes? <clears throat> so I'm trying to see how quickly they can transition and accelerate. So this is a really good example. You see one stick and drive close to what we're looking for. We'd love for him with his left leg, okay, he sticks now to gain more ground with his second. Okay, now watch the, here. See how he steps underneath himself? So those are the things when we work our drills, what we're trying to eliminate. We want him to stick and gain ground. He takes three unnecessary steps there. We all know that's the difference between a tackle for loss or a tackle for no gain and a tackle for down the field by the safety. So what I do is, is in my progression of drills, now I have them do the bag steps, no shoot, but I'm going to give them a push assist for me so that they can feel themselves accelerate out of the cut. This is what it sh should feel like. When you stick, plant, and drive, this is what it should feel like. When you can feel yourself change gears and accelerate, this is what it feels like. So I'm giving them a little push. A, it's to help them go forward, but it's also to give them that suddenness of what they should feel, what it feels like when you're doing it right. Okay, another one, lateral stick and drive. Okay, and then this is lateral turn and burst, okay? Really th same thing, just instead of going vertical stick and drive, now we're going open toe and run. Right there, right? It's the difference between Miles Garrett making the tackle for loss or an explosive run. This is a really good one. You can feel it here. Watch, right there. Now, he doesn't score. He's gonna get up and be more mad than anybody else. But the the difference is, right, that right there, stick and drive, transition burst, change of direction. For those guys who take extra steps, wasted movement, or can't transition accelerate, that's a TFL. Another great job. Inside zone, okay, with a tight end coming on the back block. Watch him stick his left foot in the ground right there. Now it's a full sprint.
Okay, jump cuts. So a couple of things that we talk about on jump cuts <clears throat> and in, in running principles in general. We want to stay connected to the ground, okay? Now, we don't want our feet to stay in the ground, but we want to stay connected to the ground. So we want to get our cleats back in the dirt just as quickly as we can, whether we're accelerating, okay, and running full speed, whether we're cutting, spinning, making a move, okay, or getting ready to take on contact or run through contact, okay? We wanna get our cleats back in the dirt as quickly as possible. We wanna stay connected to the ground. So Christian does a great job, right? <clears throat> when you first go out and start doing jump cut drills, they get super high, right? They wanna get really extended chest up, jump off the ground. So this is Barry Sanders' son who played for us at Stanford. And a really great job. Okay, not good by the corner. <clears throat> Safety. But a great job by Barry. Staying connected to the ground, right? Not getting too high and then accelerating. Put the ball away. Okay. <clears throat> In our jump cut family, we also use a slide step. Right? So now a slide step is I'm really just going to swivel my hips, still staying connected, still same pr principles as the jump cut, staying connected to the ground and accelerating. So we throw, throw a screen out here to Bryce Love, down here to the field. Okay, gives him a little stutter, slide step, and then takes it 93. And that part we can't coach. We, will, we all wish we could. Okay, read and reaction. So one of the skills that I think is critical for a running back are read and reaction, right? So <clears throat> as a running back's coach, one of the tools that we're going to give him is what, what's your aiming point, footwork, okay, and read. Within that, now once you get your eyes on your read, once you get the football in your hand, what you do with the rest of it is really read and reaction to what the defense gives you, right, or what your blocker's leverage is. So I think it's critical for us to work read and reaction skills with our players. Work similar run schemes. Where they can play fast and react fast. Because one of the things that young players always tell me or talk to me about when I ask them <clears throat> what they want to work on or what they feel like they need to improve, well, my vision. Well, a lot of vision, okay, is not seeing too much. Knowing what your read is, having the discipline to keep your eyes on your read, but when you know what your read is, and I know my read is here, now I can peripherally view or see the second and third level. Right? Not all at the same time, but now when I know what I'm seeing, I can read and react to what I see next or what happens next. And a lot of vision is, right, innate feel ability that guys just have. But it's also a trained skill that we can improve. And the biggest point of this clip, <clears throat> right, Right here, 
but he sees the corner falling back in on the play. Okay, so some of our read and reaction drills. With a tight spin. So there again, one of the things that I teach on spin moves, staying connected to the ground, keeping your pad level low, okay, and then we're going to speed out of our spin. Come out with speed. Great job, right? <clears throat> Here's a great example, okay? Eye progression, eye discipline, and then read and reaction. So, outside zone play. His eyes are on the defensive end, 94. As he goes and reads the defensive end, he fills the linebacker run through. Now that part is just reading, reading and reacting, right? He fills the linebacker run through and works the power spin. Spins right out of it, right out of it, right out of it with speed. And then he's working to the next level. Okay, so accelerating through contact and breaking tackles. I want you to watch these two clips back to back. So with all of our footwork, agility, change of direction drills, I always try to or always have them finish through contact, whether it's a single bag or a double bag holder. All right, so work in those skills of accelerating through contact. If you'll watch, this is, this is Christian, right? But you can see him accelerate through the contact. Okay, so now this is Bryce Love, who's probably, at this time, he's a true freshman, so he's 10 or 15 pounds lighter than even Christian. but he explodes, he gets faster as he accelerates through contact. So this was our opening game last year against Dallas. All right, this was the season opener. Right, and right, right when I got to the Panthers, it was before we drafted Christian, and the knocks on Christian were the th same things that we heard about Christian, you know, when, when we recruited him at Stanford, and the same thing that everybody told him coming out of high school, which was, you know, he was too small to play at the next level, he couldn't be an in between the tackles or in every down back, and he couldn't hold up, right? I think this run is a great example of why I stood on the table for him when I got to Carolina because I believe in the guy. I believe in his work ethic, who he is on and off the field, and also know that he's a great running back. I had no worries about whether he could hold up, whether he would be a great player at that, in, in the NFL. I knew he would be. Great job finishing on the goal line, running through contact. And we always talk about leg drive, right? So the things that I'll talk about, whether it's running through contact, running through holes, okay, or just running posture, we talk about knee up, toe up, okay, and then always driving and accelerating our knees on contact. Okay, so this is contacting the def a defender who's coming at you from an angle tackle, okay, from the side. So a couple of things that I teach. 
when you can, we always want to go near leg and near shoulder up and through the defender. Okay, whether we have the ball in this arm or not. If we have the ball in this arm, we're going near leg, near shoulder, up and through the defender. Okay, now we're working ball in the other arm, near leg, near shoulder, on contact, up and through, accelerating through contact. Same thing. Near leg, near shoulder, up and through contact. So this was Thursday's practice, yesterday's practice, okay, live scrimmage period at the end, working overtime rules. And this is near leg, near shoulder, up and through the defender with an exclamation point. And if you can see me down on the bottom of the screen, I'm going to meet him in the end zone. <clears throat> near leg, near shoulder. Accelerate your feet through contact. Okay, pass protection. So these are the principles and the progression that we will teach once we get to the, the drill work. Okay, the first thing is, is that we want to attack the grass, close the cushion, okay? So we're going to attack the defender and attack the grass. So just as soon as my eyes see my work, okay, my guy, I want to go take up the ground, close the cushion and attack the grass. It does a couple of things. Now it puts me in attack it in an attacking aggressive position and mindset. And it also gives me space between me and the quarterback who I'm trying to protect. One of the biggest flaws that I see guys do, and we, we've made a point of emphasis here is, guys wanna sit and hop in the pocket and wait for the guy to meet them. If you do, you're going to be a dummy getting run over, okay, a tackling dummy as he goes through the quarterback because you are trying to catch him. The other thing, even if once he meets you here, even if you try to strike him at this point, now you have no room for error. Any knockback at all and you're into the quarterback cylinder here, falling back to the quarterback. So that's one thing, we wanna go meet him, all right? Now, the next point, this is not an, I mean, this is not a passive set. This is an aggressive set. When we say come to balance, okay, we have to, all this means is we're going to set on his inside number, we're going to accelerate our feet or foot fire, okay, and we are going to get in the strike locked and loaded position. So come to balance only means I'm getting in strike locked and loaded phase. It is an aggressive, I am the aggressor, okay? Now, we are either gonna do one of two things. We are gonna strike and lock, or we are going to strike and recoil. So, if the defender meets me, and he decides that he wants to come meet me head on, not give me a move, okay, not try to give me arms or any head fake, I'm going to strike and try to latch and lock, okay? I want my elbows tight, I want my thumbs up inside, and I am aiming for the numbers in the breastplate area. I'm going to punch, strike, latch, and lock. As long as I have my hands inside and now I bring my feet with me, I'm going to move him out. No worries of a secondary reaction or secondary pass rush move from the defender. Strike and recoil is when the defender tries to give you a pass rush move or some type of hand swipe, whether it's a long arm, club and rip, club and swim, whatever it is, and your strike is knocked off. So now you don't get a great strike where you can latch and lock. You have to strike and now recoil, okay? So you're gonna bring your hands back and you're gonna get back in great phase to strike again, all right? As we strike and we get in that locked and loaded phase, the things that we talk about are eyes up, head back, patience, let the defender get into your strike zone. One of the downfalls is, 
You tell them to be aggressive and they get so aggressive that they're out of balance, right? And they lunge because they try to kill the guy. But the guy within arms, just arms length, yeah. He's not in that strike phase. And then the next part is pad level and our power there again comes from the ground, cleats in the dirt. And then regardless of who you're blocking, where you're blocking, what body position you're in, or if you get caught in bad technique, fight to finish. Fight to finish. You can be in really bad position at times, especially as a running back. You're scanning, right? I'm coast to coast. I've got four weak, I've got four strong. You're looking here, all of a sudden the corner comes and he goes up and under, okay? Or the offensive lineman sets flashes like he's going to block him and all of a sudden the linebacker comes. Whatever the situation is, you get caught out of position. Fight to finish, okay? If you fight to finish and you're physical, you can get yourself out of a lot of bad situations, okay? And you, you can make a lot of wrongs right, a lot of wrong technique or not taking up the grass if you will fight your tail off. So this is what we talk about attacking, okay? Outside linebacker on the edge or a guy coming from the slot, I am going to go attack him. I am creating space between myself and the quarterback. So a couple of punch drills that I work. So this is just knees, okay, elbows in. Eyes up, head back. Strike and recoil. Up and through. This is a great angle here. From this side of it, you can see his eyes up, head back. Right on, locked onto the target. This is a shuffle punch drill. So <clears throat> the offensive player is going to shuffle, keeping his pads low and square. The defender will walk into him. So this is a great example. We want to be the aggressor. Go meet him. So we're putting these phases together in this drill. So don't lunge, wait until he gets in that strike zone. He does it much better that time, staying locked and loaded. So this is a great example, before he tried to punch when I wasn't in reach. Especially when you get those great pass rushers, right? <clears throat> they're going to try to get you to react so that they can react but they're going to bait you. So they're trying to get you to give you your first move so that they can get what they want, whether it's a speed rush, up and under, okay, club and rip, club and swim, whatever it is. Now, <clears throat> this is a resistance pull and pull. So once you've engaged with a defender that you're blocking as a running back, what we see so many times is that secondary pass rush move. So if you go attack the grass, and you get in that strike locked and loaded phase, and you strike him and you latch and lock, now, what is, what is he going to do? He's going to give me a reactionary or secondary pass rush move. So he's going to try to pull me, okay? Or he's going to try to throw me off and still get to the quarterback once he gets to the quarterback level. We just saw that on Coach Elson's D-line tape, right? You can have a great initial block, but now they're coming with their secondary move. That's where we have to be ready. Bring your feet with you. And that's what's great when you strike and you latch and lock. When you really latch and lock and you've got a great strike, all you have to do is bring your feet and let your feet do the work. Okay, so this is linebacker versus running back versus linebacker one on one pro, and I'll bust through these really quickly. Okay, so he does a nice job attacking the grass. Now he's flashing his hands just a little bit too early, but he has a great strike. Watch the defender's helmet. Now he's got him off the ground and his head going back. We should win this, right? You would, you would think this is gonna be a win. We didn't bring our feet with us. Stopped our feet in the ground, 
okay, leaning forward and allowed the secondary pass rush move to take us away. Now, <clears throat> we would here's what I tell him. Go more at his inside number here, okay? Go more at his inside number as you take up the grass, but what he does from this point is great. He's the aggressor, he strikes, latch and lock, and I run my feet, run him around the quarterback cylinder. Now, we don't want to backpedal or catch. We have no room for error right here. But the one thing that I do love that he does, and the one thing that we've, we've been talking about, is he stays patient, he waits until he gets in the strike zone, he's got his eyes locked on his target. Now watch him strike him and lift him off the ground. He can really finish him right here if he wants to. Right, two examples from <clears throat> practice. You really see it from this, this angle. Okay, safety blitzes off the edge. He sees it, he recognizes, he goes and attacks the grass. He's in strike locked and loaded phase. Okay, punches his hands and runs his feet. Safety's nowhere near the quarterback. Okay, and then the last part, okay, and I won't get into this much, but I, I always believe that it's important to spend time working with the running backs, okay, so that they understand route running, whatever routes that you're asked to do, and also giving them great ball skills, all right? So my time is up. Appreciate you guys coming. I know it's time for, for lunch or dinner. Thank you guys again.